Hello everyone. I figured I would try something a little bit different in terms of making videos for my uh, current channel, which at this time is a disc golf channel. Started this about a month ago doing disc golf, and I thought I would like to add something a little bit different to the disc golf community, and maybe this video can be helpful for others inside and outside of the disc golf YouTube community. So I see a lot of videos uh, in the disc golf world, essentially online on YouTube. And uh, I'm not coming at this from a position of some sort of high moral authority or some sort of an expert opinion. But I've been producing videos off and on for, I don't know, I think since 2010. I mean, technically, when I created this YouTube channel in 2006, I created a handful of videos for City of Heroes, and I long since deleted them, and I've done a variety of videos since then. But I picked up a lot of sort of tricks and tips and basic understanding of how to do video production for YouTube, you know, some low level but halfway decent video production. So you are welcome to watch this video either in part or in whole, maybe get some tips, but some of the typical issues that I see with a lot of the disc golf videos, particularly from the more amateur side like me, people like me that don't really earn a paycheck from this, is uh, a lot of issues from the audio levels being wildly out of, uh, out of this world, like sometimes extremely low and then extremely high. You know, someone will be talking with very low volume because they're off in the distance and you have to crank the volume up to listen to them or... As uh, you know, then suddenly they start playing music and it's cranked up really loud, so you have to turn the volume down, things of that nature. And so, in a lot of you know, bad editing, um, they're using limited camera work, you know, because they're on a smartphone or something, which is totally fine, but you need to be able to sort of make better use of what you've got. So, you're welcome to follow along here, and hopefully, you get some tips out of this. And I'm going to put together one of the videos that I recorded a few days ago, and you're going to see it basically come to fruition from the very start to the very end without you having to watch me record it in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this intro screen and we're going to see a couple little uh, folders that I've opened up. One is called rendered video where typically when I've done, gone through the entire video production process for a video that I'm uploading to YouTube, all the videos that I upload to YouTube fall in this category come from here so this is kind of where this comes comes from and not every one of these may make it to YouTube but almost every one of these does but this is my rendered video folder and I, I tend to use this uh, for my intro I recorded a five second intro which I'm trying to remember to put in the front of every one of my videos so that's why this folder is over the second folder here over on the right is the actual content that I'm going to be pulling um, from my camcorder now, you know, which I've done that, and now it's on my uh, PC, which I'm working here, my Windows 10 PC, and I'm going to be opening up my video pr uh, production tool, which is called Premiere Pro, and I'm going to be importing these three videos. So as you can kind of tell here, these are MTS videos. Uh, there's three of them. They're two, three, and four minutes long, respectively, and change each. And this is going to make that the backbone of the video that I'm going to produce here. And I've actually produced far more complex videos, but I wanted to give a basic one to start. Um, and incidentally, I'm using OBS Studio to record all this, and I'll spend a few minutes getting it going. So now it's time to launch Premiere Pro. And this is the video production tool that I use as part of Adobe's Creative Cloud. And I have this uh, because my wife pays a monthly uh, subscription for this. Uh, we've been using this on and on for several years. She uses other programs like Photoshop. I mostly use Premiere Pro and uh, whatever the audio uh, program is. Um, but anyways, here it is. You can kind of see a number of the videos that I've produced recently. I could, in theory, just open this up and then so we can start from here. But we're just going to go and create a new project. And... Uh, this is a video that I'm going to be producing, which will actually come out before this one. Um, but it's going to be uh, a form request, uh, form critique uh, request video for others to look at and maybe comment below and tell me how I can improve. So form check 
request. This is what I'm going to call this video. This, so this project is going to be called the form check request, and that's also going to be the name of the video file once it's there. So once I've hit OK, these four essential windows come up, and these are generally the ones that I'm dealing with. There's little windows here, like for audio, and here's this little window here for or whatever pain. I don't know what you call these things, whatever. Anyway, so here's generally what I'm going to be dealing with. It's a one screen, one 1920 by 1080p um, IPS display. So anyone can do this, anyone can view this, and what you're seeing is exactly what I'm seeing. And uh, the only thing I, I tend to do here first is the default here is always frame rate, sorted by frame rate. So I'm going to go and sort by name so that the videos that I produce that I import into here are going to come from there. First and foremost, I'm going to grab this uh, intro. Let me show you what this intro looks like. So in theory, this is what I will be putting into every one of my videos for the very first time. So let me get this here. And I like actually putting it into this pane here. So this is your timeline. And when you import it into your timeline, it also is imported into here. Now, the two things you'll notice on this pane right here that's currently highlighted, you see this here. That's the sequence. And I'm going to add lots of additional clips into here, but the sequence will be named the name of whatever the first video that you've imported. Now, I could have imported that video directly into this folder directly into this pane, but I imported it into this pane and it automatically imports into here, you know, the drag and drop operation to here also drops it into here. But if you drop it into here on the left, it won't necessarily drop it in the timeline. But the reason there is a reason I did that. So now we've got the sequence here. I'm going to go ahead and rename the sequence. You'll notice I copied the name of uh, the project. I'm going to do control V form check request. And now, whenever I try to export this video, it's going to try to export it as form check request. I'm going to click on the timeline and do Control S to save project. And I routinely Control S to save, and you'll see that uh, almost as a matter of OCD uh, repetitiveness here, me constantly saving work here. Because in the unlikely event of a power failure and my uninterrupted power supply failing, you know, Premiere Pro will save, you know, a backup every minute or two or whatever the default is, but I want to save every time I do sort of a significant change. Okay, so you're kind of seeing what's going on here, that, but this isn't the only thing that I want imported. I'm going to go ahead and close this because that's the only thing I want imported from that folder. This here is my Disc Golf Form Exam folder where the three videos that I've imported from my camcorder are going to also go. Now I could either import it into here or I could import it into here. Now since this window is covering that this area, I'm going to go and do this here. I'm going to select them in this order, 18, 19, 20. I'm going to touch and grab and drag from 18. I'm going to put this right here. Boom. Now you see here it's importing that into here, I'm going to uh, press the uh, backslash or the slash key, and that now fits the videos. I've got the five second intro, and then the other videos in order, 18, 19, and 20 imported. Now that they're there, and I can see the audio, you see down here, there's this video part here. So this top part here is video. This bottom part here is audio. You can see here V1, V1, A1, A1, A2, A3. There's different tracks, V2, V3. And this is kind of like the middle of the timeline. And then above is video, down is audio. And you can add more video and audio tracks over, over time. But right now we're going to work with this amount. So let's take a look at this pane over here. This is like the totality of all the video. Like everything that's in the timeline is going to be displayed here. And so you can see from the start, it's zero, and the end, it's 10 minutes and 15 seconds. The video in its totality will not be 10 minutes and 15 seconds. It's going to be significantly shorter than that. And then we can uh, sort of drag this to kind of zoom in. 
or zoom out where we can click the, the slash. I think it's slash and backslash, so this would be slash just above the enter key. And that sort of fits everything into frame. So you can see that there are little indicators, minute four, two minutes eight, three minutes 12, four, uh, four minutes 16 seconds, so on and so forth. And as you sort of tighten that up, these values change. I like to get it to where that value shows approximately one second. So we're now at eight, eight seconds, 12 seconds. Let's go to eight and 12, or eight, four and six. So that's two second intervals. I get it to about one second. And the reason why I spend a little bit of time orienting this up front is this gives me uh, a little bit of uh, space to get all set up. Incidentally, this is sort of like the preview window of the entire project. If you click one of these, you can go, you can double click, and then it'll look at this one clip. So you can preview the, uh, the clip, or you can preview the full project. Now, by default, this is raw. Uh, this audio and video is in full quality and at full volume. So you're gonna have to spend a little time thinking about what the quality of this project is gonna be when you're done with it and you're uploading it to YouTube and what is the audio volume going to be, not just for this clip, but every single clip you import into your project. It's important that you get the audio correct because if you're a viewer and you like to view and listen to uh, YouTube audio, you'll notice pretty quickly someone that has no attention to detail to audio and someone that does um, or someone that prioritizes audio enough to adjust the volume of the project before they upload it to YouTube. So this is one of the things we're going to go through here is we're going to sort of get the volume right. So you can hear in the source uh, of this audio already for this video, this is it's pretty loud. And so that's going to be like that for here. So when you come here into the I guess the master timeline. Alrighty, for this video, it's pretty loud, so we're gonna have to change that. We're gonna have to fix the audio volume. Now, this first five second intro, I've already pre fixed it from the start. So we're gonna listen to it real quick. After two seconds, there's that. Okay, so I want you to focus on the right here, bottom right here. There's this audio like gain meter I don't know what it's called but it's vitally important that you pay attention to that so you notice this chime here how low is it how what how high does this get towards zero got to 12 my goal this is think of this as 12 decibels negative 12 decibels this is a decibel meter starting at zero for I guess maximum gain in other words it can't go any more than than zero so 12 decibels under that is your goal, or negative 12, whatever this is, what value is. You want your audio to never go above 12. And it can go anything below that, but you never want it to go below uh, above 12. And the reason why is if you go above 12, your uh, YouTube audience is going to have to lower their volume of their speakers or headset or headphones or earbuds or whatever to not... Uh, be hurt. So let's go to this clip here. See how it's already for this video. Pegging this it. Is you see this red and yellow. Frankly. You see that red and yellow. You want this to be green. A. You never want it to go above the green. And you'll one thing you'll find that's consistent in all three of these clips that I've recorded is the volume is going to be like that the whole way. So now I'm going to show you the first thing you should look at before you even start editing. Before you start going through any of this get the audio right at least set the baseline of the audio correctly and then you can tweak this as needed so we're just going to right click we've selected all three of those clips we haven't selected the five second clip at the start we've only selected the clips we want to edit now you'll see this pop-up menu or this pull down menu in this case is technically a pop-up menu you want to go all the way to audio gain now your program obviously may not be premiere pro but I promise you, you're going to have a, a, a way of adjusting the audio volume. In this case, it's gain. 
Now you can set gain to zero decibels or whatever the value is here that's maximum. Adjust gain by whatever decibels. Normalize max peak. Normalize all peaks to whatever. Now I typically just do this. And I'm not suggesting that you don't deal with these, but I'm, I'm saying just as a starter, as a beginner, all we want to do is do negative 12. What this does is make sure that nothing is ever above that 12, that negative 12. That means that this will never be too loud. Now, it can be too quiet, but it won't be too loud. And in the case of wind noise, if there's a lot of wind noise, you may want it at a lower value like 18 or 24. But we're just going to set these to a maximum value of, of uh, minus 12 decibels. Now let's kind of look at this meter as this plays. Form examination video. Okay, that's a little uh, bit better. Get, so okay, you hopefully comment, you can kind of hear me and me at the same time, but down below, this is a little bit better from wrong, what I want here. Now, one of the things you guys won't see in post, but this OBS clip, I'm going to edit after we're done with all this, and I'm going to do things like adjust the volume levels. And if there's any ums or dramatic pauses or someone knocks on the door and have to go do something for a few minutes and then I come back and edit, all that kind of stuff is going to be edited out. And this final project is going to be slightly reduced from the amount of time that it takes me to totally do this entire project. But everything you're seeing here is going to be the previous video to this, unless this comes out so terribly that you never see this, in which case <laughs> this is all mute or moot, pun intended, either way. Mute for pun intended, mute for not so much pun. All right, so we're at 10 minutes and 15 seconds. And for anyone that's followed this channel, you know that I'm not satisfied with the default audio hardware of the Sony Handycam that I'm using. It's a great Handycam, but it's not great for dealing with audio noise. So a significant portion of my time is not just going to be editing this clip down to just what's needed but it's going to be dealing with audio. So, but let's go ahead and, rather than me talking the whole time, let's just go ahead and do this and you can kind of see what I'm doing. Alrighty. Okay, now that's a few seconds there that I can, I can trim or maybe a tiny bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'll start talking about there. What I like to do is take about a half second shy of me start talking and that's where I basically cut things off. So I basically, I'm looking at when my mouth is moving. This is, this is okay. So I'm gonna hit C and you see where this, I'm using the arrow key, I hit C. And this is gonna be the razor tool for C or C. I'm gonna click on here and Adobe will kind of help you out. If you just get close up to the line, it'll it'll pull that razor to that line. I've hit C. Now I'm going to hit V, which will take me back to the arrow, the selection tool. So V. Now you see this little segment here. I'm going to have to delete the segment, but I don't just do delete because I could just cut it or hit the delete key and get rid of it. I'm going to do Control Z to go back one. I'm going to click it again, and I'm going to do Ripple Delete, and this will pull all the tech, all the footage, and titles, and everything else, and audio, and everything beyond this point. It'll pull it to where it meets this. So here's here's now that. Alrighty, for this. Okay, and I start there. So that's good. This video. This is quite frankly a form examination video. Uh, I need all the help that I can get, so if any of you want to comment down below all the things that I'm doing wrong constructively, please uh, let me know. I brought 10 fairway drivers. All right, so you can kind of see that's going pretty well, and I'm not seeing any significant spikes here in the audio, so I'm going to presume for right now the audio is okay here. I'm going to get kind of close to the end here. We're going to give it a second. Okay, so this so this clip here is me talking. This clip here is me throwing from and, and with the camera behind me. And this clip here is me throwing with the camera beside me and then me narrating. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and kind of bring this a little bit to here. I'm going to use a slash key to get close to here. Okay, I stopped talking, so let me find out. I'm going 
gonna start throwing some discs. Okay, discs. Mm. That looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that. Ripple delete. Go ahead and get set up here. So for the purpose of. Oh, I start talking. So let's see what happens. Start talking about here. All right, that's close enough. Can can be half a second. Can be one full second. Ripple delete. All right. So for the purpose of this set of clips, I'm going to be throwing that away. All right, that's that's fine, Nick. You're doing a great job there. Let's get kind of close. <laughs> God, look at that. Look at that doofus. All righty. Absolutely terrible release. Now I'm going to go retrieve the discs in shame. <laughs> All righty. Retrieve the discs in shame. In shame. Mm, don't want to get... That's good. That's good enough. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect here, and really this is more to show you guys what it's going to look like, but you're going to see pretty much what this video is going to look like. All righty. Okay, here's where I start talking. Ooh, man, I start, <laughs> start moving, so let's see. All right, so I don't like to show myself moving too much. I like to largely be set because it's... All right, yeah. All right, let's go this. This is what the, those two clips are going to look like. All right, I'm actually pretty fatigued. From All right. Go back to here. Drive 500 feet ever, I'm nearly 50. I just want to get better. I want to be more accurate, get a little bit further, and not throw my arm out. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. All right. Great day. There we go. That is pretty good. All right. I went back to the video. The end. The I pressed the home key, and that brought me to the end. And then I've just pressed the thing there. What you just saw that pop up was one of the auto save features of Premiere. So if my computer shuts down or the program crashes, that's the last save thing. That's the last auto save thing. But I like saving when possible. So I just saved the project. And. Uh, I actually have 10 discs as you can see here so what I need to do is bring out a list of those and I'm going to import it into this video and what I'm going to do is for each of these throws I'm going to uh, create a, uh, a little title for each one of those discs so that people can see what I'm throwing so this will matter more when I'm throwing when you can see behind and you can see the flight path of the discs um, but uh, from the side it really doesn't matter as much what I'm throwing so I'm probably not going to put a legacy title there but I will do that for here all right now what I'm going to do Okay, I give kind of a rundown of the discs here. Leopard. Another leopard. All right. So I've got a list of these in Chrome. So I have to open up Chrome to get that list because I'm going to need to pull from it. So let's see. Documents. My discs. And this is, I have a triple monitor set up, and this is on my leftmost monitor. Not that it matters to you, because really this is the only one that, that you care about. But all the discs that I'm going to be using for this, I uh, will pull from this list. And actually, I'm going to need to I largely know what I'm, pull, what I'm throwing with, but uh, I might as well. Ten. Everything else is six to eight speed. In fact, actually, once you get 
away from the Dragon and the Valkyrie. The rest of these are all six and seven speed. These are the only speed fairway drivers that I will throw. And I'm going to list them on the screen real quick, but it's basically Leopard. All right, now I've got to grab the ones I know that I'm throwing. And I'm going to put them in a document. This edit pad light is where I'm going to save that. So another leopard. Uh, TL, that's a good one. So make sure I've got that added in here. Uh, TL T bird. Yep, got a couple T birds. Gonna add those to the list. Another T bird, a little bit heavier. The champion. All right. And actually, this day I, I threw a bunch of other discs just before this. This is bit, uh, the second video that I recorded that day. Technically a third video, but the very first video uh, is not something I'm going to be able to come through with. T bird, a little more overstable, and alleg allegedly better uh, throwing because of the shape of the plastic, etc. An FD. Alrighty, so let's see. I'm going to put that into my list. I'm getting a list uh, off to the side. Basically, this here. Here's my list of notes, <laughs> for lack of a better whatever. And, uh, let's see. A gazelle, mostly overstable. I've got that. And a dragon, which is fairly understable and has, over the last year of use, due to all the nicks and usage that I've had on it, you know, I haven't used it a lot, but it's received a lot of damage because the type of plastic is relatively weak. Um, this is relatively understable. And last but not least, a Valkyrie, something that I don't actually throw. Okay, so that's the Valkyrie. So, we've got this list here. Uh, let's see, here's a disclaimer I was supposed to actually mention up front. This is a different type of video. I want people who make videos to have an idea what the process is, specifically my process, and work to build their own process in ways that are better than they currently are. I'm not necessarily going to do what I do the best way, and I don't have all the shortcuts memorized, and I have no doubt that my process is not optimized, but it works. And while it can improve, it might show you some things that can help you improve. And you might comment below and tell me ways I can make this better. So bottom line is me doing this hopefully will make others better that watch it. But oh, going back to this, as you can see, here is the 10 discs that I'm going to use here. And actually, people don't need to know the wing length or the rim length here. So I'm going to do that. Sorry if you're hearing my mechanical keyboard. Okay, these are max distances I expect to use them. I can't throw 380, which is why I never use the Valkyrie. Hell, I, I can't throw 300 anything, which realistically I shouldn't be doing any of these. But I'm going to get rid, rid of these measurements. These are basically the measurements at infinite disks lists as where these discs would land if you throw them optimally to get the kind of flight path that's needed. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a good idea. So this is essentially the five things that are going to appear on screen. So this I just copied into my clipboard. So let me go back to here. Let me do slash, come back to here. I need all the help that I can get, so if any of you want to comment down below all the things that I'm doing wrong constructively, please uh, let me know. I brought 10 fairway drivers, roughly between 6 and 9 speed. One of them is a full increase, so it's 9 speed. Everything else is 6 to 8 speed. In fact, actually, once you get away from the Dragon and Valkyrie, the rest of these are all 6 and 7 speed. These are the only speed fairway drivers that I will throw. And I'm going to list them on the screen real quick. But All right, list them on the screen real quick. Real quick, but it's... Hold on, let me get... I'm going to list them on the screen real quick. All right, boom. He, that's me telling me to do this. So now we're going to go to File, New, Legacy Title. And unfortunately, if you've updated to the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro, version 14.1, there's a bug where this doesn't work, so you have to roll back to 14.0. 
and to fix this problem but legacy tile is what you're going to need and I'm just going to do uh, disk list Alrighty, I'm going to see this kind of draw out. All right, and I'm going to do a slight adjustment here. I'm going to do a slight adjustment here. All right, close enough. We're going to do text. I'm just going to put somewhere in here. Just going to drop it in. Control V, Control A to select all. We're going to select Roboto for this. This is the font family, so we're going to go to the Roboto font family. This is not in installed in Windows by default, but it's an Android fault. It's the default font that's used for Android, and I happen to like it, so I use Roboto. And it's just not used as much in uh, YouTube space as far as a font that's used. I'm going to select bold because I think that needs to be used. But you see the font is so freaking huge. Yeah, we're going to change that. We're going to change the font size. I've set my default to 60, but I'm not sure that's the right size to do here so let's do 50 how about 40 and the reason why I'm doing that is oh and one more thing I want to add a you see how the text let me go back to 100 you see how the text is like there's no borders around the text I love having a border around the text because you see how it's all white it can get a little hard to read. So what I like to do is I create what they call a stroke. So here's an outer stroke. I usually, the default is 10. I usually set it to 20. So let's see what 30 looks like. That looks good, huh? Let's do 30. All right, but this, this is too darn big, so I need to shrink it some. So let's go back down to 50. And I'm going to use this arrow tool to sort of move it around. Now, I am unfortunately if I'm too far to the left, so maybe if I move this here, this will slightly obstruct me. But I can move this over here, and I'm not obstructed. So let's get it as close as I can to the border here. And we're going to do something a little different. We are going to, instead of doing center, we're going to do things like justify right or right alignment. So, and then you'll see over here, there's a center. You can center it up there. You can center it across the screen. I'm going to do control Z to get it there. We're just going to center it across the screen. But you notice how I'm not obstructed. And here are these disks here. So whereas I normally like to, because text reads from left to right, put this on the right side of the screen. Since I am personally on the right side of this, well, technically this left side, my right, but our left. Anyways, that's where this is going. So welcome to my world. I'm making do with what I'm at. So you see how you can see that? I'm going to leave this disk list here. So just because I've created this legacy title doesn't mean that it's anywhere. It's right here, though, in our project list of files or whatever this is called. Yeah, you can tell I'm homegrown on this. I haven't gone through any official training. I just fired it up one day and literally learned all this by myself. Which isn't saying much. Okay, so you say, say you have different tracks, video tracks up here, audio tracks down here. This, because it's visual, is will only fit on a video track. It won't fit down here. You see how there's a... I can't drag it down here, but I can drag it up here. So I'm going to drag it here. Now you notice the duration here. The default is 2.3 seconds. If you look at the very bottom of that pop-up, it says duration... Two, uh, two minutes or two seconds, 0.30. Let me go ahead and delete this. Right click here. Now you can change the default duration of this so that this here is longer. Then you can make the adjustments as you need to. But anytime you, let's say if you want to duplicate, you want to make a copy of this, you just do duplicate. Say this duration is, is uh, two seconds, 2.30 seconds. The duplicate that I made is uh, also two and a half seconds, basically. What I like to do is set this very first one, since I'm going to be du making duplicates of this, I set the duration to longer. Now, it's two minutes and th it's two seconds, two and a half seconds, because the default timeline uh, is this. 
it, it, this video footage that I'm using is 60 uh, frames per second. If the footage that I imported first was 30 frames a second and I imported that into the timeline, this default would be five seconds. I know it doesn't matter to a lot of people, but I've learned to import the highest frame rate stuff first and everything after that. But I'm going to set this to five. And again, I know this doesn't matter to a lot of people now, but as you do this over and over again, this will become more important. So you see this pink uh, entry into the video timeline is um, longer, twice as long as it was before. That's deliberate. Now, one thing you don't want to do is do this. Oh, no, I've now deleted that video, Control-Z. Okay. And you can move this however you want, but you notice how it kind of snaps towards that line? There you go. That did it on its own. And then you can shorten this and lengthen it, or you can shorten it or lengthen it here. And you can do the up arrow, down arrow. You can click on the 6 and up arrow. Didn't matter. All right, so... But it's basically that is now leopard. on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of cheat. I use the slash. It'll toggle between the max, the where everything fits, and whatever you currently have fit, and then whatever you currently have. So I'm going to come out here, see if I'm still reservation bag with talking with discs. Tangle. Okay, I've talked about the. Let's see, da da. Mm -hmm. Actually, throw at all. Period. It's in my reservation bag, which is everything nine speed and higher, nine to fourteen speed, which I've forbidden myself from touching under my current conditions. All right. So I let go of the disc, so I'm going to use that as a Tommy moment. To okay, the last moment that's in frame. Because I, I actually have a deliberate process, so the moment that's off frame. All right, I'm going to grab this and stretch it out to here. So what this means is the moment I mention I, this list shows up, Basically, and then the moment that disk drops off screen, that goes away. I'm going to Control S to save. Which I've forbidden myself from touching under my current conditions. So bottom line. All right, so that's kind of why I did that there. As a standstill thrower, just to throw. And I'm going to look at the video myself and probably provide a little bit of commentary, either during or after. But so surprisingly, the, the audio isn't terrible here. So I filmed or recorded footage for three discrete videos on this day. First was a lapel mic review, which unfortunately the lapel mic did not work. So all the video that I recorded for that, uh, all that B-roll, all that B-roll, etc., was basically as useless because the one thing I was reviewing doesn't work. But the other two things I did, um, um, the wind was terrible and it was kicking up a lot. And so um, I, uh, I, had, I had to make adjustments. So the previous uh, video that I uploaded, I had to do some audio um, here, I recorded the audio here off my PC and then imported that in there. And I'll show you guys how I do that um, as well. But I'll do that in a little bit here. So, bottom line is, and actually, just to be honest, I'm going to watch this entire video, this entire video, and see if there are any moments that I need to raise or lower the audio. And that's the most tedious part of this video production, typically. And I will spare you some of that, but I'm going to do that towards the end. But right now, I'm just getting the basics in. Um, let's go ahead and get to the point where I'm about to start throwing. Here, set at a location which hopefully will provide decent camera work. I'm just going to try to throw. And I realize I need to do this a little bit and not do this, not do this, not do this or anything crazy. Try to keep it simple. Trying to build form. Here we go. Alright, so I said here we go. So let me get a little closer. Trying to build form. Here, here we go. 
So at, when I say here we go, that moment in time is when I'm going to do this next thing. So this disk list, I'm going to go ahead and right click. I'm going to do a duplicate. Duplicate. I'm just going to call this L-E-O-P-A-R-D Pro because that's the disk I'm throwing. I'm going to double click and I'm going to open this, this window. Now, I'm not going to use this list as it is. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go to the type tool. I'm going to select this. I'm going to come to about right here. And I'm going to use, I'm holding the shift key down and then doing the arrows. And you can see each of these lines where you can, you know, you can do a character. But each of these lines is being selected. And then I'm going to do delete. And then I'm going to do backspace. Now this text is the only thing that's on there. So I'm going to now click on the arrow. And I'm going to move this down to here. Now I realize the list was at font size 50. I'm going to change this to, to font size 60, but I'm also going to put this in centered because I want the text to be centered so that when I edit this and the other ones, when I, so I want to show you the reason why I'm centering this. So you see how it's shred, shred, uh, spreading out uh, evenly in a centered fashion. If I had set this to this and I did this, that goes out. Or if I set it to this, it goes out. We don't want that. We want this to be centered here, and then we want it center aligned here. So not only is this text alignment tool centered based on here, but the text is centered within the alignment tool. But this is the disk that I'm throwing. I'm going to hit the spacebar one more time and click the that, and there we go. And this is going to be the template that I use for every throw. So I'm going to throw this out here. The default is five seconds. Control S to save. And I bet money, like all but a few percentage of you are watching at this point. And I thank you for anyone that's even watched even a few seconds of this video. Uh, but I'm going to basically do this over and over again until this video is done. So... You see how there's a little swirly circle next to the arrow? Sometimes you have to wait for that swirly circle to go away before you play because the CPU will get tied up. Okay, that disk has gone pretty far. Now, I'm going to select or hover my mouse over this window. And there's a tilde key. If you press it, it makes it full screen. And this matters wherever you hover it on, what's not selected. So if I put my mouse over here and you'll notice this window or pane or whatever is selected but this is not and hit the tilde here and this gets bigger tilde over here this gets bigger tilde over here this gets bigger so you have to kind of be careful what you're doing but and also if you hit space, space bar here or space bar here it does matter what you have selected for some of your keys but for other keys not so much so you have to kind of get used to that so let me back this up again and I want to see where the disk goes okay that stopped moving about there you see the video quality was a little blurry that's because the playback resolution was set to one-fourth to save CPU resources since I'm using OBS on a budget $600 PC that I built in 2014 but in theory I could do that full let me go back. Let me back it up a tiny bit. Do that here. Hopefully the audio and video quality doesn't suffer too much for you guys. Okay. I'm basically stopping where that disk is no longer visible. And let me come back to here. Let me go to here. You can go... Uh, it's going to be too hard. So let me do the slash key or backslash. I can't remember which one it is. Oh, got to move forward myself. So you come to here. All right. Control S. Now that's understable. I expected to do that. This is a slightly heavier version of the same disc. Hopefully I'll release it similarly. All right. Similarly. All right. So that's, that's good. So Leopard Pro. Right click. 
duplicate. And this is actually a leopard champion. And then I click that one more time and that was there. And then I'm basically copying and pasting from here. Control C. I'm going to double click this. And you notice this here keeps coming over. So I have to keep pulling it over here. And this keeps coming over. These basically thin out and move out of the way. I don't really care about this anymore because I left the font the right size. But here I try to keep this here. Eventually this will stay the same size here while this I don't know, sidebar will become about the same size here. Whatever. It's quirks with Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'm going to click on the text select tool. Control A to select all. Control V to put in Leopard Champion. And since I've centered there and I'm centered there, this remains centered here. So the dimensions there remain the same. And then I'm going to start it off. Leopard Champion. And you notice five seconds looks smaller here. So. All right. So this is going to go to here. So you can tell the rate, the air time for this was. That throw is eight second air time. What the, how long was this throw in the air? Roughly 10 seconds. So it's kind of interesting. You can kind of see what's going on here. These leopards typically fly straight through. But recently I've been turning them over more, which shows some ill-advised form on my part. I want you guys to catch what I'm doing wrong. TL. All right, so my TL and copy pasting from the right pane. Let me zoom in a little bit more so I can get this a little bit better. I mentioned TL, so that's good. So from the moment I mentioned TL, or just beyond, allows people to hear. They hear the word TL, and then bam, the title appears. So right-click, duplicate. And this is going to this copy is going to be TL DX Glow. I could just list leopard and leopard and then TL, but whatever. I don't really care. It's fine. It makes it easier for me to see. So I'm going to move this a tiny bit here and select it all. Select Control A, Control V, and then this, and then that. And then I'm going to start this here. Control S to save. And give it a second for everything to catch up. All right, that's roughly when it landed to the ground, so I can stretch this out. So this is roughly nine, nine seconds of airtime, 9.54. All right, and actually this is like frames at this point, <laughs> 60 frames, 54 frames, whatever, in a second, because it's 60 uh, frames a second. Well, I'm seeing a pattern of grip lock of some sort. I'm it's not technically grip lock. I know it's a late release. It's not a complete chunking into the river. It still, it's pretty bad. Okay, I don't even mention the name here. So into the river. It still, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Okay, that's good enough. So this is uh, one of my two T birds that I throw. So I'm going to right click, duplicate, T bird DX one. Actually, I've got three T-Birds, two of them are DX, so. Text tool, up. Oh, I'm not having to touch this as much. This is starting to level out there. All right, text selection tool, right, control A, control V. The, uh, whatever this call, a pointer, blah, whatever. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. This actually takes less time when I'm not trying to narrate, so my apologies for those interested in watching this through, but having to suffer through me narrate. Oh, and actually, since this is the length of the title from when I'm creating it, not from the moment that I'm throwing it, so <laughs> the durations of my throw are actually less. Good to know. All 
right? So the duration of this title is what, 11, 12 seconds maybe? 10 seconds, all right. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. And I'm kind of noticing that my ta that my volume is tends to be just above this 18, which is fine. When I do the review of the entire 10 minute video or, or so, I may raise the audio a slight bit and then look for any gusts of wind to lower. The main thing is I want my voice to come just shy of this 12 number, but also make sure that nothing is above the 12. So I've got to be paying attention to that. Control S to save. So I went straight to this. So let's see. I'm just going to go from the. Okay, I'm going to go from the. Well, this is good enough. T Bird DX2. Shift end number two. That. And while that's opening up, I'm going to my thing here. I'm not having to touch this as much. This is really kind of leveling out there, but I'm not touching that anymore, so I don't care. Control A, Control V, went from 164 to 170. Pointer that. And we're going to start this off right here. I'm going to go to about here. It'll probably fall about here. Oops. I want to see what's going on. Okay, good enough. <clears throat> and I've got one more T-Bird. It's a T-Bird champion, so... I guess I'm just going to keep shanking him that way. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. So T-Bird champion. See, so duplicate. T-Bird... I could have just literally champion, champion. All right, text. Control. Oh, make sure I got that. Control V. 175 gram T bird champion. It's gonna go right here. Wait for that little swirly key to swirly thing to go away. That way. <laughs> All right, that stopped about there. So that was a short one. Just firing these things off. Next one is going to be a Dragon DX. Or well, actually, let's see what let's see what it is. That was me overcompensating for the late release. By releasing FD. So I'm not even throwing them 100% in order of the original list. So right click, duplicate, FD, and it's, I think it's like S line, line plastic, basically star plastic, whatever it is, it's an awesome disc, so no hate. Control A, Control V, pointer that. So I'm gonna put the FD right here. Control S, move that to where it's going to be like somewhere there. Early. All right. No FD to there. That's fine. Black ties are on that. Keep in mind, I want it to place it straight. Okay, this is my gazelle, so eh, from about there is fine. So let's see, duplicate, gazelle, champion. The plastic type is after the name. I know, I know most people say like champion, gazelle, or whatever, but I like to list the name of it first with the plastic secondary because I think the most important thing is the disc. So let's go to here, text. There, control A, control V, pointer there. You can kind of tell that the uh, 
discs that I'm throwing tend to be a little bit heavier the further I go down this list, notwithstanding the Dragon disc, which is a unique disc of its own that's always around 158 grams, and it's more of a utility disc. But I digress. Still moving. There we go. So Gazelle Champion goes to about here. Control S. Literally said I wanted. Here's an understable disc. I've got a hyzer a little bit. It's my dragon. Double check. Sure enough, I mean it's the last one on the list, but it's nice to. Uh, I'm gonna mention that a little bit early because I start talking about it being my understable disc, but I don't mention it as a dragon apparently. So we're gonna do right click, duplicate. Dragon DX, even though it says it's a DX plastic, it's a custom floaty plastic. That they call it DX. It's actually softer than DX, but whatever. I'm not here to judge. I love that disc. So I'm gonna put the dragon here. Naturally speaking. All right, gonna do that. Wait for the swirl. If it does it twice, that's Here's an understable disc. I've got a a bit. something to notice because it slows things down if it does it twice. Oh, understable there. Yeah, that was terrible. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's not last but least, but it's last but least if I'm throwing my normal bag. Since I never throw the Valkyrie, um, I'm copying the Valkyrie off screen. Right click. Duplicate, Valk, Re, <laughs> V-A-L-K, Y-R-I-E, Champion, Champion, as the, br br the, um, what are they? Okay. The Brazilians, they say champion, you know, kind of a funny way if you're, not used to listening to Brazilian. Lovely language. Their version of Portuguese, by the way. Absolutely love listening to it. So it looks like encoding overload. Okay, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, absolutely terrible. All right there. So. We've largely got that taken care of, so I'm going to go ahead and the disk reads is getting pretty severe between all the things that I have running and OBS, so that's why that occurred. Terrible release. Now I'm going to go retrieve the disks. In shame. All right, I'm actually pretty. All right, so now this, since this is a side profile, really the disk that I'm throwing doesn't matter because you're not going to see the flight pass. The only thing you're really going to see is my form of releasing these discs so it doesn't really matter whether or not I uh, do labels or anything here and I'm not going to do anything like like let's say if I misspeak and I want to correct something I'm very likely not going to be adding a label for that here that sort of correction I usually let a natural error like that uh, occur but um, um, I do want to show you what it's like to import audio into this and then edit a little bit of audio into this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, this so I've got what we're going to do is I'm going to open up my Logitech no not the VPN where am I at Logitech webcam software, and we're going to play with fire here. Quick capture. Now you're going to see black here, and the reason why you're going to see black here is I have a privacy screen on my Logitech C920, which I'm now going to move. So let me go ahead and make sure that some of my things are out of the way. My cat is bumping against the door because my cat wants in. All right, so now I'm going to open up this privacy screen, and you may actually be listening to things through my Yeti microphone, but I'm going to make a different selection 
here. Okay, no, you're still listening from this here, but I'm going to make a little video. Actually, you know what? This Logitech webcam, let me do this here. Now, normally this towel that's hanging on my door here, I, I don't use whenever I'm doing a video, but you're just basically going to see everything. So let me also adjust this here. I'm going to record some audio. So you're just going to get a, a sample of audio. And I've actually got a another microphone. You might as well see everything. What the hell? This is my Blue Yeti Pro, Blue Yeti, whatever. Blue Yeti Blackout Edition microphone. This is normally what I use whenever I'm recording audio. And I put it usually right here in front of the screen. And you see how kind of how close it is, but you can't see it. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select the mic here for yeah, for back to the Yeti microphone. And this is important because what I'm going to do here is just record audio. So this is a test of the blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. This doesn't matter. I'm just going to be showing you what I do here. So normally I put notes here. Like here's a disclaimer. And I'm showing you all this kind of stuff because I want you to be able to look at this video, watch it, just be chilling, drinking a bud, and whatever. So if I show you all the things, I'm going to show you all the things. So normally when I read out stuff, I do disclaimers. This is a different type of video. I want people to make my videos, blah, 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 blah. So you kind of see what's going on here. And this is coming from this microphone, not that microphone, not this microphone, into this video. And it's going to be a certain audio level that I have preset on here. So I'm only doing this because I want to show you what it's like to import even more audio and then do some more audio work. So, okay. So I'm going to uh, say something here real quick. So th this is an idea of what the, uh, my form is. I hope you really like watching this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Okay. We're just going to pretend I'm going to import that to this video, though I'm really not because it looks like I'm not going to need to. So we're going to do that. Okay, so this audio here, 1 minute and 11 seconds, has now been imported. And I went and moved my Yeti Pro mic out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and, clo and close this. Don't save. I never save that. That's just a scrap sheet where I put notes or even sentences that I want to read out there. And it looks like I'm looking just below or looking at the screen, even though the microphone is just above that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And that actually turns the uh, Logitech web webcam off and I'm going to turn the privacy filter off and now I've got audio so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and here's a, a lot of the images that I've saved there all right so Logitech Pro this is the most recent video that we've done okay that I'm going to do this we're going to import this into here importing files that's importing. We're going to toggle name, and now it's listed in order, and this is the one here. And I just want to show you kind of what I typically do. Now, I could just, one, put this at the end of this video, right? I'm going to do Control Z. Number two, I can do this end of the video, but like on top here, and then this footage would be on top and then the audio and you see the audio file here it's one as opposed to two this is stereo this is mono because the camcorder records in stereo but uh, the logitech webcam as well as my yeti pro as well as this headset record in mono so what you're seeing is mono audio. That's why that is that much bigger. So let's listen to what it, what it sounds like. Because I want you yeah, to be able to look five, at this video seven. and watch. So here are two things at once. Now let me go ahead and move this here. Degrees away from Back to there. And then here. And I want you to watch where this audio line is. I'm just going to be showing you what I do here. So normally I'll put notes here. So see how it kind of went above 12 just a tiny bit. Sometimes I'll reduce the volume here, the gain like by two or so, sometimes three. Like, here's a disclaimer. And I'm showing you all this kind of stuff because I... All right, so that's just it. 
but in reality, I'm not going to need this. And you see when I touch just one of them, both of them are selected, that's because they're grouped together by default. All right, so in reality, okay, this, I double-clicked, and it's here in the source. You can just drag the video only into your timeline, or you can drag just the audio only into your timeline. And you can also do some fine-tuning. So I'm going to actually kind of show you. I'm going to use tilde. This is a test of the blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. All right, so I'm going to do I for N. Now, from this point onwards, all this is selected. Whatever. This doesn't matter. I'm just going to be... I'm going to hit the space bar again to stop it. O. So between that I and the O is, the te is what is going to be dragged, what the audio, video and audio that's going to be dragged. So now if I just drag the video, it's going to be that little sliver. Or if I drag this audio, it's going to be just that sliver. And again, I'm controlling Z to whatever. So what I'm actually going to do here is get a larger clip. So let me... Oh, auto saved. Doing this because I want to show you what. Okay, let's get to here. The uh, my form is. I hope you really like. It. All right. Uh, say something here real quick. Okay, so I for for there. So this is an idea of what the uh, my form is. I hope you really like watching this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Okay, we're just gonna. Okay, and have a great day. And have a great day. Okay. All right, that's good enough. I can fine tune the rest of that. So O, uh, O, not zero. And then we're going to do this here. We're going to just drag the audio here. Expecting to drive 500 feet ever, I'm nearly 50. I just want to get better. I want to be more accurate. So in theory, I could play around with this. So this is an idea. Okay, there's that. Ripple delete. And have a great day. Okay, okay and actually I'm going to have to get real tight. So I zoomed in as much as I can. That's actually the end. Okay, there's that. Great day. This is an idea of what the uh, my form is. I hope you really like watching this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Okay, so that's kind of what, that's kind of the process. All right, but. Realistically, what I've got left to do in this video, you know, I you there's a lot you can do here with audio and video, and actually this unfortunately isn't complex enough for me to go through everything. But this video is going to be hella long anyways. But you know, let me get this down to about one second, and I'm going to proof the entire video, and I'm going to adjust the audio for any sort of anything else that's needed. So, so you can tell this is up to 12. And my hunch is that I'm going to be able to raise these by two. So audio gain, we're going to do two, putting this at negative 10 on average. And then I'm going to control save, and then I'm just going to preview a little bit. For this video, this is quite frankly a form examination video. Uh, I need all the help that I can get, so... Mm, that's not good. Looks like I'm going to have to... Control Z, they're all back to 12. Looks like I'm going to have to leave the audio at 12 and find the occasional moment when I need to raise the volume. Alrighty, for this video, this is quite frankly a form examination video. Uh, I need all the help that I can get, so if any of you want to comment down below all the things that I'm doing wrong constructively, please uh, let me know. I've brought 10 fairway drivers. Roughly between six and nine speed, one of them is full increase, so it's nine speed. Everything else is six to eight speed. In fact, actually, once you get 
away from the Dragon and Valkyrie. The rest of these are all six and seven speed. These are the only speed fairway drivers that I will throw. And I'm going to list them on the screen real quick, but it's basically Leopard, another Leopard, uh, TL. All right, so that, that's good. All right, so for the sake of this video here, I'm going to assume that this video is completely done and when I render this video it's going to cause problems with OBS so I'm not going to be able to run OBS while rendering this video and uh, so that's basically gonna wrap things up on this everyone else that's done YouTube before that's uploaded to YouTube you get that process I'm not really gonna the point of this video is the video production side not really the uploading and titling and tags and keywords and all that kind of stuff so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up in this video but hope that you can take something from this rather long-winded somewhat <laughs> chaotic uh, moderately organized uh, process that's not really optimized and I hope you in enjoyed it um, I'm going to go ahead and finish OBS and wrap up this video so that I could render this and then upload it to YouTube and um, if you are watching this video right here and you haven't seen the project that I'm that I've really <laughs> that I've edited it's the prior video to this one so you can basically stop watching here and go watch that one you're welcome to do that or, or do whatever anyways thank you very much for watching and have a great day